think I ever told you, but I went to an understanding ag training. Somebody's waiting on you. Woo, let's go. They'll just come through. Lots of requests on something to see that you guys haven't seen in a while, but uh, about a month ago or so, like 82 or he's with this other one hey guys welcome back to cross Simmons bison that's big joe coming over here to see us he thinks we got cues but not today looks like he's already busy it is growing it is growing season it is breeding season here in oklahoma it should be seeing a little signs as i pulled up right here i gotta get a little closer to atv okay. gonna go visit the ceo oh, old marissa <laughs> He's got to say hi to her. We've had the Big Joe herd. Now that Haas is not in this group, um, we have a herd of 27. We're kind of pushing it a little bit. Uh, we'll see how good he can cover, basically. With 26 females, breedable females, some didn't get pregnant last year, so hopefully they'll be the first ones in heat. I think we had about eight or nine females that didn't get pregnant last year. Breeding season, in case you didn't already know, breeding season runs from about July, August, and September. By September, these bulls should be done with breeding season. It should be. <laughs> and should be done, and that's when you can pull your bulls out, is by September. So July and August should be the hot time, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Big Joe Hurd, he's gonna follow me around here. I've gotta move. Big Joe Hurd has been in here for seven days and it's time to move so he's really gonna follow me around uh so we're gonna this is big joe basically what he does he goes in there and bothers marissa and makes her move <laughs> it's not the safest thing in the world yellowstone people you cannot do this at yellowstone okay these guys are used to us every single day they're not like the yellowstone animals so do not attempt to do anything like this Disclaimer right there. Plus, just be very careful as a bison rancher too. So we're gonna rotate these out to the 80 acre burn unit. It's had rest since the end of May. And growing season for our native grasses is starting to stop. But basically it's gonna be done um, here very soon. If it already hasn't, we've hit that peak more than likely. So now it's time to get some more grub before we go all the way back to the front of the property. Let's get them moved. Somebody's waiting on you. You gonna drive from the middle? Huh? Well, I don't <laughs> the T-post. Watch the T-post, Big Joe. Oh. Okay. Come on. I'm trying to hit you with them. Give him a little woo! May hear that. That means come on. Come on. Woo! Lots of grass left in here, but a little adaptive grazing that we're trying. Slow down, hon. We gotta get some bosses to follow us. Come on! They're moving. Hold on. Woo! Go ahead, baby. Pull to the side when we get down there. 
they will see the gates open and that means they can they know they can move come on woo let's go come on big joe oh yeah he's definitely courting maybe 50 for the jumper come on woo i don't have anything to do come on Yeah, it's 54 he's, looks like he's a whip. Yeah, we should know her. You say a bag of peanuts? peanuts, peanuts. <laughs> Silly. Woo! Just kidding. Come on, woo! Let's go! So... Right now it's uh, 152 and something I learned at uh, Understanding Ag is, uh, and a note for you, Marissa, most people say move the bi move your animals in the morning because it's just naturally, you're, as a farmer or rancher, you get up and you go move your bison, you move your animals yeah. with hot wire, whatever you're doing, your adaptive grazing. These plants, the native plants, have the highest potential of nutrients and all the good stuff in the peak of the day. Really? Yep. I would have not thought that. I would have thought the morning was... So, we're actually moving them. You can stop now. Turn it off. They'll just come through. And the first thing they do is put their head down. See, she's going way down in there and getting some of that stuff. Bison love the short stuff. That fresh growth. Here, hon. I might want to go ahead and drive over there a little bit just because they, uh, they're not all coming through the gate. Yeah, that's fine. actually picked up some stragglers in the back it should all be filtering through calves are eating grass too oh they'll be busy for here for a while now heads down my well, baby's heads up <laughs> gets a chance to milk on mama I have to say, I think this is one of the best Big Joe's ever looked in the summer. He looks good. He came out of winter good, which helped him get to this point. Bullet. 
Okay, we need to go make a sweep through the pasture and make sure that they're all out. Let's do that. All right, well, we've had lots of requests on something to see that you guys haven't seen in a while, but uh, I don't know if you can hear the noise behind me. But <laughs> about a month ago or so, about a month ago or so, we took on a new project and uh, something I've been excited for. Had some struggles getting them all hatched, but uh, we've got seven wild eastern turkeys right here next to me with four Australops. <laughs> if you guys are just now uh, catching up or just joined our channel recently, we hatched out, we put 30 eggs in an incubator, 30 Eastern wild turkey eggs in an incubator, hatched out eight, lost one, and we've got seven here. Uh, they're over a month old now. They're doing it. fabulous, uh, getting so big. Well, what we did is when we hatched, so seven, we bought four Australop uh, chickens, black Australops, and put in there with them to help them kind of, uh, we had taken advice from people on uh, YouTube. They put chicks in with their turkeys and they help them uh, train where to drink from and train to guide them basically how to eat and drink out of feeders and waters like this. And uh, they've helped tremendously. And so we've had seven turkeys the whole time and they're getting so big right now uh, this little side project that we started doing uh, I started doing I was hoping to hatch out a lot more obviously didn't I've um, figured out since then turkey eggs wild turkey eggs not domestic are very hard to hatch um, out and uh, anyways our plan is now that I've only had seven it looks like we've got a gobbler in here I want to start raising a big flock of turkeys and then eventually we're gonna let a bunch go that occur here natively on uh, this area of Oklahoma Easterns and the Rio Grande's um, I'm gonna start releasing them in the future now it's gonna be a long time not until next year because these turkeys because they're wild they only have eggs during a short amount of time that uh, March April May time frame is the only time that they have eggs so once we collect them hopefully we'll have a, a better incubator and we'll have that little narrowed down a little bit maybe some of these hens will set and we can have a bunch of turkeys get a big flock and then let them go at the ponderosa and try to revitalize and reshape the wild turkey population in this area because there's a huge decline going on in oklahoma so that's the idea. The Australops, I don't know what we're going to do with them. They give them to a friend or something. Or Brooks will claim one. I don't know. But uh, wanted to give you an update on these guys and show you how big they are. We're going to get a bigger pen for them and get them out. We've got them up here close to our barn right here. So Cora and Morgan are over here. They're eating. Uh, they give them good company. So that's an update there. And also, there's something else I wanted to tell you guys. I didn't know if you knew or not. I don't think I ever told you, but I went to an understanding ag training in July. I spent uh, a, pretty much a week up there as a three-day course. So what I did was I flew from Oklahoma City, Royal Rogers Airport, flew to Denver, caught a little plane there, and then I flew from Denver straight into Pierre, South Dakota, and then from there I went to the Bad River Ranch. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to... We're gonna be riding high in the uh, Chevy Sonic right here to the ranch. Hopefully Ted's not there. You'll see me rolling up in this Chevy Sonic. Little compact car. Driving through the ranch. Woo! Somebody's leaning back in this dude. <laughs> 
All right, Ted Turner Ranch, here we come, Bad River. I mentioned these names, you may recognize some of them. Gabe Brown also wrote the book, Dirt to Soil. If you haven't listened to it, if you haven't read it, I'll listen to it. It's a great book. And then also Alan Williams teach this course along with some of their partners. Learned a lot of fabulous information that we can use here at the Cross Timbers Bass Ranch, AKA Ponderosa. And uh, a lot of fundamental stuff about soil, about plant life and all. Even the economics and the, and, the, and the business side of ranching. What we would do is basically spend uh, the first half of the day in class and then we would head out to the field. But the cool part about this situation, about this course, was it, it was located right there in Pierre, South Dakota. But the fun part about it is we got to go visit two Ted Turner bison ranches. The Bad River Ranch and then the Standing Butte Ranch. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. A vast amounts of land that Ted Turner uh, has there. It was so cool to be in that area. By the way, we went to the Standing Butte Ranch and that was where a large portion, I think most of uh, Dances with Wolves was filmed. And we got to, didn't get to see the exact area where a lot of that was filmed, but uh, we were on the ranch where that was filmed. Now, Ted didn't own the ranch at that time, but, uh, Fabulous time, met a lot of good people and learned a lot. And that uh, we talk about regenerative ag here uh, on our ranch a lot. And you know, Marissa and I are doing things where we don't spray anymore. We're trying to graze better. We've reduced our herd some by selling a uh, hoss and some ladies. And we're still working on that. We're trying to do the right things to take care of the land so that we can be more profitable, more sustainable for us as a family owned ranch and ranch business had great accommodations uh from the turner people the uh, turner workers and uh took in a lot of that soaked in it and now we're going to start applying that to our land and making it better and we do that by raising the american bison thank you guys for watching us we'll see you guys soon keep on bison ranching <laughs>